to everybody. Tisku leshanim rabot. Sunday, the fourth day of Nisan, corresponding to the 29th day of March 2020. Uh, we say tisku lamizvot to the itorah.com as well as the Lighthouse Torah Project for daily bringing us this year live. We would like to take the opportunity to begin by wishing Refua Shelema to all of the Holim of Am Israel, among them Hacham Edmon Nahum, Ben Rachel, Shelomo Ben Shoshana, Aharon Hananiah Ben Lea, among the Holim of Am Israel. Last night, I was uh, looking at the list of the Holim and I got tired of seeing the amount of names that were in Greens since the early days of this particular condition. And regretfully, the list is getting longer. Just to have an idea how many names we have on this list, four pages, eight and a half by 11, divided into three columns. So do the numbers. Several hundreds names that we know and we were told by different members of our community and different communities worldwide. So by Isaiah Hashem, we need to storm the heavens and to beg Bore Olam for Refua Shelema of all of the Holim of Am Israel. Amen. So in your time, give charity in their honor. Read Tehillim chapters 20, 121, and 130. And in your own time, in your own language, in your own prayers, ask the Almighty to send not only Refua Shelema, but to send sanity and blessing to the entire world. Amen. So today, by request, I will discuss with the Kahal Kadosh a couple of new ideas that we came across in the past 36 to 48 hours. First, I hope and pray that everyone had a peaceful, enjoyable, pleasant, in-house Shabbat. I know that for many of us, it may be difficult not having minyanim, not being able to leave the home, but this is hora'at sha'a. This is the order that we are being given, not only by the health department, but also by our great hachamim. And you'll be surprised how, how the hachamim came together in a united front to make sure that we are going to do the best that we can in our reach to reverse what's going on. If we remember one of the classes that we gave in the early stages of this uninvited guest, we already mentioned that we should not mention the name of this condition, not to give strength, as the Gemara writes clearly and many other sources, but we spoke about Yaakov Avinu. How Yaakov Avinu, in his preparation to his meeting with Esav, his brother, the Torah tells us clearly that Yaakov Avinu utilized three strategies to come across his brother. One was the power of tefillah. The other one was the power of gifts known in Torah language of Rashi, Doron. And number three, going to war. And I believe that each and every one of us, some more, some less, I believe, or like to believe, that we are activating these three stages, or three steps. The power of tefillah. How beautiful is our tefillah today. First of all, if you do it with a Zoom minyan, 
like we have been doing already in our synagogue for a while. Beautiful prayer. I'm sorry to say this, but everybody in their own cubicle, everybody in their own home, we don't talk during the prayer at all. And you may say, Rabbi, of course, there is no one to talk to. Believe me, even in Zoom, if you don't mute the microphone, you will be able to talk and to schmooze. But Baruch Hashem, everybody is respectful and we mute everybody. And this way we are able to have a few minutes of quietness and peace of mind. And we are able to pray. After the prayer, we unmute everybody. I'll share some alachot. I will talk to everybody. So we have a sense of humanity as well. But uh, yesterday, in my beautiful Shabbat at home, and I will tell you, was nice Shabbat, prayed, learned, ate, slept, talked to the wife, and did the same thing several times throughout the Shabbat, I came across a very interesting concept that I like to share with the Kahal Kadosh. So at least we are taking care of Yaakov Avinu tactic of prayer. The next tactic, Yaakov, is preparing going to war. Now, what does it mean going to war? Yesterday, I read a sefer that was, was gifted to me by our youngest daughter, a sefer by the name of Olam Hamidot, the world of character trait. That's the name of the book. It's available in English and in Hebrew. I think it's put out by Art Scroll. And I was shocked, shocked by the opening statement after the introduction to the Sefer. And he quotes the author, a statement in the name of Rabbeinu Haim Vital. And the opening statement of this book is about marriage. Although today is not a shiur on marriage or shalom bayit, but I will tell you one thing, that us being at home and us not being able to live, and even those who do live, I hope they have good reasons, and they go in and out because everybody and all the doctors and all the governments are saying stay indoors, stay together, don't go out, etc. But it says Rabbeinu Haim Vital that the ultimate area of determining if a person has good midot or not good midot is the way he treats his wife. I was, I froze, and I don't freeze easily. I froze when I saw the opening statement of this sefer. And it says, people may have etiquette, but etiquette should not be confused with midot. What does it mean? Etiquette, it's, let's say, how a person eats, how the person behave themselves when they are surrounded by people. And as I read a few pages, I came out with the following conclusion, which he says, not because a person has good etiquette or dresses well or lives in a beautiful home, it means that a person has good midot. It says the way to measure the midot of a person is their marriage. For the record, I know ladies loved so far what I did, but the book also says that is a two-way street. Also the wife needs to work on her midot. Because at the end of the day, if it's a one-way street, not always work in a proper way. Why do I bring this up today? 
because no one can deny that now we are spending a tremendous amount of time at home. Like it or not, we are. Now, we can take this time or this situation and make it as a war or to make it a war with a happy ending. What does it mean? Allow me quickly I have a few things in front of me. Bear with me a moment. Uh -huh. So when it gives here this new printout that I received on the checklist of our staying at home situation, the first one, the first list, or the first item is Osim Shalom Bait. It says one of the areas that a person must work in this moment of solitude at home with a wife and children or with a wife alone is the concept of Shalom Bait, that husband and wife wife and husband, they should talk among themselves. In a respectful and in a proper way. Don't complain. There is no room for complain. I'll share with you something else that I read yesterday. Let's think for a moment how was the life of our forefathers during the time of the Holocaust when they lived in a ghetto. How do you think was the life? Do you think that they had water to take a shower? Hot water? Probably not. Do you think that they had food like we have available Probably not. Do you think that they had the news channel bombarding them every minute with updates and video clips and WhatsApp messages? Definitely not. And I can go on, but I think that you're trying, that you understand what I'm trying to say. That at this moment, let's call our stay at home a luxury vacation. You have water to take a shower. You have plenty of food, what to eat. We have electricity. We have air conditioning. We have our families close. And even when our families, for obvious reasons, are far away from us, Children, grandchildren, parents, siblings, relatives, friends, rabbis, community members. Today, with the touch of a button, you are able to see everybody. So let's make sure that complaining is MIA. It's missing in action. Be thankful. Count the blessings. Obviously, the situation is challenging. Obviously, we don't have the answer to everybody's questions. But one thing is for sure. This is God perhaps saying to us, I want to spend some time with you. That's why, if you remember a few moments ago, I spoke about Yaakov gifts to Isav. What name are being utilized for these gifts? Doron. Matana also is a gift. 
But the language used to lies in Yaakov's case is the word Doron. Now, to all of us, Doron means a gift. But I'd like to share with you an interesting Hiddush. The word Doron comes from the word Dira. Dira means home. Perhaps God is saying, I'm going to move in with you for a week or two or three, whatever time is being determined, and let's spend time together. And that's why it says that when a person should be careful, it says, This is in the name of the great Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky. And it says that when a person is at home and the fact that we're going to be talking a lot with our family at home, to avoid talking about people. And that's why he continues and it says, it says a person should reactivate the attribute or the great character trait of humility and to learn how to have self-control. And it says here, and this is in the name of the great Rebbe Chaim Kanievsky, a person who takes advantage of these moments and a person changes and a person becomes more humble. And the way you become more humble is just to understand what's going on in the world. Great people, great leaders, great Talmideh Hachamim, average people, rich people, poor people, men and women. I'm not sure about children, but I heard a couple of cases as well. And a person comes to realize that Borei Olam is sparing the person by not going through these experiences. So it says in the name of the Behind Kanievsky, Kolamit Hazek, whoever takes advantage of this situation and becomes stronger in this matter of self-control, of not criticizing, of speaking in a respectful way, Hazekut Alav, there is added benefit and merits not only for the person but all his extended family. Why? I believe the answer is as follows. We need to change. And we cannot ignore the fact that there are many areas in this situation that is causing havoc worldwide now we can start talking about the economy which we don't know what's going to be every day is a different story remember that economic number one the all important our connection with god many times it's more external than internal and we find always a reason why to escape from shul, why to expedite the prayer, or to complain, etc. Our lifestyle, the world of business, thanks to many platforms and many businesses, people are spending money nonstop. It used to be ship it two weeks. Ship it three days, now same day. All that affects the person. A person goes on a shopping spree without leaving the home. I'm not telling you not to spend. I'm not telling you not to buy whatever may be necessary, etc. But guess what? Somebody asked me, Rabbi, how am I going to buy garments for Pesach? I says, at this moment, Buying garments for Pesach is secondary. It's secondary. Where are you going? 
You're not going to a Pesach program. You're not traveling anywhere. You're not inviting guests for this reason, obviously. You're staying home. Even shuls not open. So what are you going to need to run and buy garments? Even the stores are closed. It's called non-essential business. But we are in a generation that we are accustomed to spend and we are accustomed to use a lot of plastic and to spend what we don't have. And guess what? Maybe Bore Olam is telling us enough, it's enough. Haji, you are not living the way I expect you to live. Between your means, in a normal way, without competition, without hatred, without jealousy, without envy. Guess what? Stay home. I like you in pajamas. Or if you're wearing the same suit, two holidays in a row, it's not the end of the day. And I think that this situation should give us, hopefully, the mindset and the proper perspective that what Olam wants to have private time with all of us, individually and collectively. Morality in the world is in decadence. If you are normal, now we became abnormal. And the abnormal became the normal. The Gemara says. We see an upside down world. And what the Torah is telling us, stay home. Thank God, nightclubs are closed. Places of immorality are closed. So in a way, what is Hashem doing? And we cannot be oblivious to what I'm going to say now. Maybe Hashem is telling us what he wants from us. Maybe Hashem is telling us, listen, don't do me no favors. You can spend, you can spend to what degree. But I think that I look at your suit when you come and pray to me. Make sure that it's clean and it's presentable. Like the Gemara of the Hokle Israel today says, make sure your body is clean when you pray to Akadosh Baruch Hu. And I'm not saying you should not have a beautiful suit for Shabbat or for the holidays. But Rabotai, ladies and gentlemen, we need to put our priorities in the proper perspective. The problem with us is that we go on Pesach vacations and then we cry about paying tuition to our children in the Talmud Torah or the Yeshiva. Or we complain about a situation which Baruch Hashem, we should be counting our blessings that we have food and water and a family and a spouse and, and whatever we need to live even on a middle of the road way, which is the way the Rambam talks to us, finding Derech Haim Sa'i. Rabbi Akiva Iger mentioned in his time that there was regretfully also a plague. And plagues, by the way, it is not something new in our lives. Regretfully, there were several instances in human history that plague affected mankind. If it was the Spanish fever or it was the bubonic plague, which brings me to something that I heard last night in a Torah class that discusses the Gemara in Rabbi Akiva's time. Remember the students of Rabbi Akiva? 24,000 of them died. 
They died in a short period of a few weeks. How do they die? Short answer. The Gemara says, Askara. Askara. That's the name of the condition in Hebrew. The Mefarshim call it diphtheria, perhaps. The explanations on this condition means that the person has difficulty breathing and it affects the throat of the person. And this is how the person, God forbid, leaves the world. When I was listening to this yesterday, then I said, Ribbono Shel Olam, Master of the Universe. What are the symptoms of the condition in our days? Even someone early morning sent me a message. How do I get tested? Where do I go? And I posed this question to get the proper guidance. And the first question that we asked was, do you have difficulty breathing? What I'm trying to say, that the way that the students of Rabbi Akiva passed away could be very similar, and I say could be very similar to the symptoms that we are seeing now. And remember, this happened 2,000 years ago. There was no CDC. There was no drive-in test room. There was no made-up hospital in stadiums. It was the feeling, the sensation. In a few days, the person was unable to breathe and the person left the world. So as I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, I found a very interesting additional uh, message that it says, Sarich leinasel mea A person must work on not getting angry, self control. Bekefeda balev. And don't hold grudges in your heart. Beliot besimha. And a person should try to add messages of happiness. Liskor tamid. And the way you do that is by counting the blessings that we have. Regretfully, many people, they worry about what they don't have instead of worrying in what they have. And in this moment, give tzedakah. Tzedakah tasil mimavet. Whoever you want to give tzedakah, to needy friends, to needy families, to the food bank, to the Bikur Holim, to the synagogues, to the yeshivot, whatever. Give because at this moment, especially now that we are before Pesach, the importance of helping the needy families in the Mizvah known as Ma'ot Hitim, which I'm sure every community and every synagogue has it. And it says also, the person, again, should follow the medical protocol and don't spend a lot of time or any time in following the news every minute of the day. Why? Because it brings fear. It brings fear. As the Gemara writes an interesting concept. Allow me to share a story that I heard a few days ago concerning the topic of fear. We already know what Shalomo HaMelech says. Al tira mi pahat pitom. Don't be afraid of a sudden fear. The Gemara writes, and the Ran, and many other sources, it says that many times the fear becomes activated in our heart, has a short circuit in our relationship with God. And it says, a person, the Orchot writes, a person must make the effort 
to acquire Irat Shamaim, especially in the areas of faith and bitahon in a Kadosh Baruchu, Be Balide Simha. And when a person builds their support system, I'm sure that many people are taking now vitamin C, zinc, echinacea golden seal, immune boost, whatever it's available out there with ashgaha or proper supervision, obviously, we try to take it. Guess what? For every pill that you take from vitamin, add to your spiritual life a spiritual vitamin. Vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin B, vitamin E means emuna, vitamin B, B12, it's bitahon, okay? Vitamin A means ahava, loving Hashem. Vitamin S, that's for simha. So I gave you the vitamins that you should take. A, E, B, and the simha, the S. Although usually that doesn't mean something pleasant, but those are the acronyms of these letters. It says, because the fear and the anxiety, obviously, prevents the person to experience tranquility in life. But when a person has tranquility, margoa, peace of mind, umenuhat hanefesh mikola daagot, and vacation from all the worries and all the concerns. As the Gemara writes in many sources, kolma de avid rahamana letav avid. Whatever God is doing, is doing for a good reason. Again, we don't understand, we don't see it, but we need to understand one thing, that also, in the way that Hashem runs the world, there are certain concepts which are foreign to us, but the concept of tikkunim, you know, the concept of it'orerut, sometimes where Olam takes the saddikim among Am Israel, as we regretfully follow the news, how many great people of Am Israel, lo aleno belo alechem, they left the world due to this particular condition. Again, anistarot la Hashem elokenu. These are the hidden paths from the Almighty. Beaniglot lanu ulbanenu ad olam. But we have the revealed concept to us and to our gener future generations. La asot et kol divre ha-Torah hazot. To fulfill the ways of the Torah to the best of our abilities. And this is something that we need to understand that what Olam wants. Why? Let's be honest. No one can deny that our lives is different today than 10 years ago. You can blame technology, you can blame society, you can blame social media, or you can blame all the platforms that exist. But God perhaps is telling us, I want you the old-fashioned way. You are too separated from me. You are too divorced from me. You are concentrating on the physical, on the material, on the negative, instead of you having a normal relationship with me. You became high maintenance. We became, all of us, we became high maintenance. 50 years ago, one chicken for the entire family was considered luxurious. Today, different meals, different menus. And let me clarify, we're not against all of the above. And we're not telling you live like a Nebach or live like a Hazid case. But maybe God is telling us, slow down. 
slow down. You have 4G, you're not happy. You need to have 5G. You stay home for Pesach. Come on. You're a Hazid case. This is where we are today. And if someone is offended by this, Mehila, it's not my intention. But I think that we cannot be oblivious or numb to whatever is going, us, is going around us. Do you know how many Talmideh Hachamim and great community leaders are in the hospital fighting for their lives? And you know how many great people, dedicated husbands, dedicated parents and mothers are fighting for their life? And everyone is a diamond by itself. Why is that happening? I do not have the exact answer. But I'm going to go to my teacher, the one and only Moshe Rabbeinu. You remember Moshe Rabbeinu? I'm sure you do, right? Torah Sivalano Moshe Morasha Kehilat Yaakov. So Moshe Rabbeinu, the one and only. And the Torah tells us about the passing of the sons of Aharon Kohen. And Rashi writes, the reason why we read this Torah portion in the day of Yom Kippur is to remind us, like the essence of Kippur brings atonement to the person, when good people of Am Israel passed away, it also brings an atonement to the entire generation. And no one can deny, it. and I'm going to say it the way it is, that our generation, and I'm talking about worldwide, Yehudim and Goim, was heading to a disaster. Heading to a disaster through idolatry, through immorality, through embarrassment, through bashing, through complaining, unhappiness. Maybe God is saying, you know what? Haji, enough, it's enough. You're ruining my life. You're ruining my world. You are ruining my plan for you. I'm going to send you back home like I did in Egypt. As the Pasuk says, Spend a few weeks at home with your wife and children. Work on yourself. Don't nag. Don't cry. Don't complain. Show me your ways. Show me your true colors. Show me that you are willing to change. Show me something that I can say, you know what? I'm going to give you dessert. I'm going to give you Mashiach survival. With this is a non-negotiable aspect of emunah that we all have engraved in our heart. As the Gemara writes in Shabbat, Tzipita le Yeshua, did you hope for Mashiach to come. And I hope and pray that everything that is going on is just to keep us together. As I was saying to somebody earlier today, somebody show me a picture of thousands, thousands of airplanes literally parked in their parking lot of the runway. Especially international airlines that they are not flying in and out. Most people are not flying today. So I said to myself, wow, Bore Olam is setting up the airplanes to take Am Israel to Eres Israel. And it's actually a Pasuk in the Perasha. I will carry you 
on the wings of the eagle and you will bring you and I will bring you to me. Now, all of us know that the eagle eats the airplane. This is it. Guess what? There are plenty of airplanes to take Am Israel back to our holy land. It's about to happen. I believe that it's about to happen sooner than later. This is my humble opinion, and I hope that the Kahal agrees. But like in marriage, we agree to disagree. But this is definitely the lens of Emunah now that is talking. There's a few more things to say, but I need to be respectful of the time for the next speaker. But I'd like to share only a very short paragraph from a beautiful sefer called Be'er Haim that he quotes the Shala HaKadosh and talks about Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And it says, Bechol Yom Bayom Mi Chodesh Nisan, it says the Shala HaKadosh that every day of the month of Nisan, it has the spiritual sanctity of Rosh Chodesh. He goes further and it says, Igra de Kala, that the 12 days of Nisan, which represents the offering of the Nesi'im that today belongs the fourth day of Nisan to Shevet Reuben, this refers to every month of the Jewish calendar. So in other words, first day, Nisan, second day, Iyar, third day, Sivan, and so forth. And it says that this is something very, very special that a person needs to understand that these days of Nisan are not simple days. And it says, what is the idea of Rosh Chodesh? So it says, Eikara Aboda, the main concept of a person who inyan had the shoot, renewal. Now, renewal, and I'm sure the Kahal Kadosh knows, is a magnificent organization out of New York, I believe, out of Brooklyn, and they have different branches worldwide that help people get a new lease on the life by matching donors and recipients of kidneys. Beautiful, and we bless everyone involved with it. But that's what it says here, that Rosh Chodesh, it's the concept of a person renewing the life. Belo itya'esh mileat hil shub ba'abodato. And the person should never despair in their service to the Almighty. In other words, don't allow the Yeser Ara to say, listen, you have done X, Y, Z transgression. What do you think? You're going to change it? According to what we are learning today? Yes. And if there is a month in the Jewish calendar that you are able to do so, is the month of Nisan. So, Be'ezat Hashem, let us hope and pray that this month of Nisan will truly be activated the way we mentioned the other day, Benisan Nigalu, Ubenisan Atidim Le'igael, like the first redemption was in the month of Nisan, also in the month of Nisan will experience the ultimate salvation, and we pray to Akadosh Baruch Hu, to send refuah shelema to all of those that need it, Yehudim and Gentiles. Because at the end of the day, we are called Bene Adam. We are descendants of Adam Arishon, the first human being born into the world. And therefore, their condition and our condition, we are all on the same boat. The only difference is that we carry a major responsibility in the world. Why? Because we are called Beni Bechori Israel. We are considered the firstborn of Akadosh Baruch Hu. So it's in our hands and in our opportunities 
to activate all of our spiritual powers and all of our spiritual tools, whatever that may be, in self-improvement, in self-control, in praying, in charity, in learning, in talking nicer between husband and wife and parents and children, whatever that relationship may be. And by Isaiah Hashem, Hashem will see our improvement, our enhancement, and will send the Yeshua. Amen. So we're going to say goodbye and a great day to itorah.com and then I'll move to the Spanish channel via the Lighthouse Torah Project. Muy buenos días y Shavua Tov a todos los de Lighthouse Torah Project. A las 12 horas de Miami, por favor, conéctense nuevamente al Lighthouse Torah Project, que va a haber un link para un programa especial que está comenzando hoy a las 12 del mediodía hora de Miami por cuatro o cinco horas van a ver como 10, 12 speakers y yo tengo el honor y el mérito de ser el primero que va a hablar a eso de las 12 y al final del programa que acabaría como a las 5 horas de Miami va a haber un concierto de Yaakov Shueki uno de los cantantes eh, jacídicos más populares del mundo hoy así que todo esto está hecho para contrarrestar los momentos difíciles que el mundo está experimentando, así que Bezat Hashem, a las 12 pm hora de Miami nos vemos de vuelta, la clase va a ser en español y creo que va a haber un link en este website eh, en un poquitito más tarde que tengan todos Shavua Tov y muy buenos días